thank you so much dr devakant sir for bringing this around uh, my name is dr bhavya i am a consultant with azi hospitals i've been an alumni of uh, shri shankara deva netralay and uh, here i am so is my screen and uh, voice everything legible around yeah yes bhavya but you want to share your screen yeah, yeah. enter slide for more yeah yeah i'm good yeah Yes, please yeah. go ahead. And Doctor okay, Bhavya so is the know. only is the only stand-up uh, comedian who is also an ophthalmologist, or the other way around. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, go ahead, Doctor Bhavya. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Good morning. So, and... Bhavya, you should expect a bit of comedy in the middle as well. Yeah, absolutely, it's it's just coming. The the very fact that we are talking about fake emulsification in the morning, whether to go for fellowship or trust, is it's because. this form of humor <laughs> so good morning uh, as we start the topic it's a burning one it's a fake emulsification perplexities fellowships versus trust hospitals i'm going to dive into the different paradigms the different dimensions that as a resident as a fresher and as an ophthal himself all of us we have faced it and uh, proceeded with that so there are no financial disclosures it's just a story of struggle for the most perplexed perplexities which is i don't know how to do a fake oh that is what the 10 minutes are going to be all about so the confusion whether to take up a fellowship or whether to go to a trust hospital the eternal confusion between both of them so we bring our hero back uh, to this new juncture called fake emulsification and i fondly call, call this uh, hero as motio man the cataract learner the fake oh man and let him reintroduce himself to the new challenges which he's going to face ahead so the spectrum of questions why what how where as soon as you are a first year resident the the word fake or becomes a part and parcel of your uh, thoughts why come on because it is the cataract statistically speaking cataract is the world's leading cause of blindness said by who and learning cataract is the most important surgery in ophthalmology referred by who's who of ophthalmology what makes this perplexity so important because it is my story because it is your story because it is our story and it is every single ophthal's story all of us are aware of the fact that uh, this meme is very self explanatory instead of first year resident i could uh, all the residents instead of diverging towards this step of soft cataract surgery a resident is busy doing his ward work in most of the institutes that uh, we see so let's actually throw some light to why do we really need a fake fellowship or a trust hospital as a stepping stone to our careers statements that all of us hear during the residency which are not so pro cataract learning my next turn comes too late patient's bp miraculously shoots up to 200 by 120 because he has forgotten to take medications on the same day your turn gets cancelled and the seniors do their cases and a very sad uh, story i don't like going to the vet lab i've been fondly quoting this that vet labs are like dinosaurs all of them have heard about it they knew that they exist but nobody has ever seen them so all in all residency at a number of places is holistically a bad destination of doing cataract surgery and hence the common dictum bahar nikal kar kar lenge now the struggles post residency deciding a fellowship with a burning introspection if they give a cataract training along i have seen the most focused and the most elite and the most intelligent residents turning into fellows going for fellowships other than fake or refractive still asking if they're going to get some fake exposure in their residency evolution to fake emulsification from sics because yes that's a very important step and of course the economic aspect because the moment you are an ms the moment you are a dnb the moment you are a dms the economic aspect starts shooting in the second question where would you learn fake emulsification Uh, this is a very nice uh, triangle of learning curve which i call the triangle of freshers which i have uh, developed uh, it shows surgical exposure good pay and comfort zone at three different points if you see any setup where a fresher is working if you see any setup where a fresher is serving or learning 
only two out of these three will happen. You go to an elite center, you do your SR ship, you'll have a decent pay, you'll be in your comfort zone, but there won't be a surgical exposure. You go to a very peripheral center where there is too much amount of surgical exposure, they'll pay you good, but it will be out of your comfort zone. At the same time, if you go for a city which has high volume and it is in your comfort zone also, of course, they won't pay you good. So out of these three, only two will be sufficed at one point of time. And that's the biggest uh, confusion that a fresher faces. So the road called Trust Hospitals suddenly popped up and it's not new. It has been there since the previous generation of ophthalmologists. These trust hospitals, they, um, they function under the umbrella where you can actually do numbers. They could be a solo practice, they could be a clustered practice. A trust hospital where basically they are doing charity cases and the ophthal side of the story is you go there to do numbers, you go there to learn and you go there to polish your skills. The first perplexity is the first FACO surgery because you have studied residency and then suddenly you start learning or you start having to do FACO. The pros, you're a consultant there, it's independent, it relatively has more numbers, they pay good. Patient expectation is low, there is no fixed timeline, like you are not bonded for a year or two if you're not into a bonded uh, with that particular trust as I call it. You have an independent decision making. And of course, it's a professional growth. You start serving that trust. If it is somewhere around your uh, area of settlement, your, you, you start building up your name and your patient pool. The cons, the independence becomes aloneness. Like I, I might get personal at this moment of time because I come from uh, uh, Gujarat and uh, we usually have solo trusts. And practicing alone does become an issue because probably you don't have anybody to handle your complications teach you at the point where you get stuck up. OPD surgical imbalance because you are the one who is seeing OPD, you are the one who is operating. Low salaries eventually because if you feel that the trust hospitals are paying good, I'm sorry, we are mistaken. Low patient expectation induces recklessness, which is a very derogatory or which is a very detrimental term for learners like us. Surgical misadventures, complication rates because they shoot up when you're working alone or when you are at a place where you relatively are there to learn. Tunnel vision towards cataracts. You start focusing your career, your, you start focusing your learning more only towards cataract. And of course, detachment from the academic world because you get into the number game. The second umbrella, the fake of fellowships. They could be short term, they could be long term. And they could be with refractive surgery as most of the institutes are providing. The major perplexity is there, which is hands-on and numbers because they say that they don't give so optimum numbers as compared to your own uh, trust learning curve or a short-term fellowship, which is paid in nature. The pros being, yes, of course you learn under an expert guidance. They give a step-by-step -step approach. There is an academic touch. There is a quality and a corporate exposure. There is a fixed timeline. That it's a one and a half year course or it's a two months short-term paid FACO fellowship. So you know that you're going to get a finite number of cases. So this is how you're supposed to learn. Of course, you get a wet lab training uh, exposure and you get uh, exposed to the most fancy machines and the different uh, dynamics of the FACO emulsification under expert guidance. Of course, you get a refractive exposure. Of course, you get to see complicated cataracts and how do the people manage, which probably being in an independent trust setup, you would not have ventured to do that. And of course, it is patient satisfaction oriented. Ons, majorly based on the teaching surgeon, which is very subjective in nature. Paid short-term fellowships, of course you call it paid, right? So step, stepping out of your MS and having to pay to learn something is not everybody's cup of tea. It's a long-term course. It's a skewed at the ends. In the starting, you learn less and in the last six months, it picks up pace or you get major chunk of your hands-on in the last six months. There are relatively less numbers. The independent exposure to complications is curbed because obviously you have somebody above you. And of course, geographical disparity, like somebody living in the northernmost... One minute remaining, sir. ...would have to travel. Oh my God. 
So what do you do? You start with SICS and uh, there are two types. I would have to skip fast, fast, fast. So things to consider, you inquire proper numbers, you go for bonded, non-bonded, you go for complication management. And uh, you th these are the things that you consider. Look for an institute that teaches you A to Z of FICO dynamics because to draw is a skill, to paint is an art. And of course, time and space are relative. So be wise in choosing the institute. Uh, SR should bonded avenues are also considered. Go to the institute where they meticulously teach and you are allowed to be verbal about your insecurities, be it a running rexis or a hydro dissection. And a, a, a setup with a posterior segment is always beneficial on a lateral thought. And finally, how? Because, well, we are the entire UC exists to guide. It allows you networking. How do you decide these institutes? You have a list of institutes which are there at these particular junctures. And my story specifically, insignificant but yet worth sharing. DOMS from a government institute, a paid short-term fellowship, a trust hospital exposure, and finally secondary DNB from Sri Shankara Deva Netralai. And as a coincidence and as a pleasure, I have somebody I consider my guru, Dronacharya, Dr. Nilut Pana Devri, ma'am, who is a, a, a trainee, who is a panelist and who was taking care of all the trainees. Uh, I, I specifically remember the meticulousness that after trust hospital exposure, I came down to uh, Shankara Deva. And you know, th this is how it gets instilled. And currently, finally, I'm a vaco refractive surgeon at uh, AZI Hospital. So this was the the entire scenario, exposure optimum, complications plenty, and learned infinite. So uh, seen all the worlds possible, and that's how landed up deciding that this could be an uh, this could be a nice way to do that. Probably you could start with a fellowship under a training or under a trained setup, and then you could go to a place where you are relatively doing numbers. So that would be an ideal thing to do. And finally, uh, be be aware of two optimistic people. One over optimistic who says that. So your time is up. Uh, can I take thirty seconds? Yeah, the last controversial food that I would leave the young ophthalmologist is: Do we really need a fellowship for cataract? Can the residency programs become self-sufficient? And are we genuinely lost in the number game? So uh, I guess that's the take-home messages. Don't take home messages. Take home optimism. Take home some beautiful bonds take home the stories and take back home a part of you that's lost in the rat race. So uh, that's it from my side, Dr. Bhavya Gokani signing off. Thank you so much, UC and AOS, for having me here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.